guards and post players around women's basketball rejoiced when Camilo Cardoso declared for the WNBA draft. But beware, the South Carolina paint is still unsafe, as Adele Tack will be patrolling the lane in 2024-25. All right, how is that for a cheesy opening? In this video, obviously, we are going to look at Adele Tack, as she is a very intriguing prospect for South Carolina that's already on campus. And well, she's 6'6", has the feet of a dancer and the hands of a surgeon. Is the surgeon? Can I catch the ball well? I'm not sure. Anyway, before we start, please give the video a like and subscribe to the channel if you like the content as well. A special shout out to Captain Will of South Carolina as I was able to get some of the information I got on Adele from his interview with her earlier in the year. I will put a link to that down in the description. If you're a South Carolina fan, you need to be subscribed to his channel. If you're a UConn fan, you should be subscribed as well, as it's always good to keep an eye on the enemy. All right, let's get into this. Adele Tack is a six foot five post player, and she plays out of Dallas, Texas. She played basketball for fun in middle school, but really did not take it seriously until she got in high school. She said that her freshman year, she started doing more individual workouts and really working on her balance as she was always sort of falling over. And from there, her game just really took off, and recruiters started to notice her. She rose quickly in the rankings as the number 12 rated prospect on the ESPN rankings. She was initially very interested in Tennessee as she liked Candace Parker's game and sort of wanted to be like her as well. She liked Coach Kelly Harper who was recruiting her. But then unfortunately over the next two years she fell down in the rankings and she is currently listed as the number 26th ranked player in the 2024 class. And the reason that she fell in the rankings is simple. It was due to injury. So she missed the majority of her junior year in 2022-23 as she broke her foot, her right foot. And as foot fractures can be, this was a very difficult and frustrating injury because she kept on the timeline to return kept on being pushed out as it was very, very slow to heal. So all up, she was out for 306 days. However, the good news was is that she made a full recovery from this injury and was moving well. But unfortunately, the injury bug hit her again her senior year as she injured her knee and was out for the season. So therefore, after talking with the South Carolina, she'd committed to South Carolina. She talked to Don Staley and their training staff Staff, and it was agreed they worked it out where she was able to start at South Carolina in January of 24. So South Carolina has done this with their recruits before. Chloe Kitts enrolled in the second semester of 2023 and that really set her up well for her first full year, which was this year, the 23-24 season, where she was obviously a major contributor to the national championship team as start of the majority of the season. Now, Adele Tack is not playing due to her knee injury, but she is attending team meetings and just getting a feel for the culture of the team. As well, importantly, she is rehabbing under the watchful eye of the South Carolina training staff. And I want to be clear, no injury is good, but in terms of her knee injury, it's the best case scenario. So essentially, her patella popped out. It's much like the same injury Ice Brady had. And essentially, when you do that, you tear something called the medial patella femoral ligament, and that helps keep the kneecap in the right place. And basically, they go and reattach that. After the surgery, you're limited for about six weeks, and then from there, you just slowly rebuild under the training staff. And around 12 weeks, she would have normal range of motion and regular movement and things like that. And by all accounts, she is going well in her recovery. So as I said, this is a much better injury than like an ACL knee injury or a chondral fracture or something like that that's ongoing. And I think it's a massive benefit her going to South Carolina early because they can keep a watchful eye on her, make sure her training load's appropriate, and try to prevent any future injuries from happening and making sure that she is ready to go. At the start of 24-25, Dawn Staley was asked about her prior to the second round game versus North Carolina and she just threw flowers at Tack, saying that Tack has great footwork, great hands, great IQ, is able to pass out quick, and she's just really excited about her, her progression. And this is the thing South Carolina fans should really get super excited about. I can't wait because she's, I, I equate her defensively um, 
to Aaliyah Boston. I mean, she's communicative. She's high IQ. Um, she can move. I know she doesn't move very fast right now because she's on crutches, but she can really move. And then from an offensive standpoint, I, I, I really feel like she can impose her will. She's got great footwork, great hands, great IQ, kick it out. Like, I'm really excited about her progression and what, she, what she'll bring to our program. And when you watch her high school clips, you can just see that. She just moves so easily. In the interview with Captain Will, it was so clear that she's a smart kid. Like her answers when he was interviewing were very thoughtful. It really impressed me how she talked about how she'd been working on her balance her freshman year. And that her plan before her injury happened was she wanted to get better as a perimeter defender as she knows that will separate her. So she was quite keen to work on that. But then she got the knee injury and her second season was shelved, unfortunately. As I mentioned earlier, Dawn Staley was raving about her and her intelligence. And she talked about prior to the LSU game, she asked her team what they should be looking for on the LSU inbounds play. And essentially, it was crickets in the team meeting, and then Tack raised her hand and said, we're looking for the pick and pop, and that was right. And again, that just goes to show you that she is engaged and will be ready to go at the start of the 24-25 season. Now, in the interview with Captain Will, Tack said that she chose South Carolina just because she liked the coaches and the culture of the program, and she has really chosen well. I think South Carolina is the perfect school for her. As they've had some success developing bigs, it would appear, with Wilson, Boston, and Cardoso. The other thing is just the depth that South Carolina has will allow them to bring her along slowly so she won't be dumped in a situation where she's having to do high minutes and, you know, you really want to monitor her workload considering her foot fracture in the past. At the time of recording this, Chloe Kitts has announced that she's returning. I assume Ash Watkins is returning as well. Sakima Walker still hasn't announced what she's doing, but it's anticipated that she's returning. Not to mention, they have Saniya Fagan, so their depth is just ridiculous. At this stage, I assume the plan is to have Ashlyn Watkins at center, Kitts at power forward, and then Bree Hall, the small forward. And then Sakima Walker could come in and back up Watkins if she's in foul trouble or if they want to give a different bigger look but as well Adele Tack I would think would be sort of battling for playing time with Sakima Walker and I haven't even mentioned Joyce Edwards she's the number two six two forward that's also coming in they are just so ridiculously loaded up front but the good thing with Staley is she's built that culture at South Carolina if you come in you need to earn your playing time So if she has to wear time on the bench to fight for playing time, Adele Tack, then that's fine. That just gives her more time to come out firing in her sophomore year when Sakima Walker's gone and she can battle playing time with Watkins or move Watkins over to the four. They've got so many options. That's why this signing was perfect for South Carolina as it continues their ability to develop a dominant big and this is the next one in the pipeline but as well it's perfect for Adele Tack as she can be developed brought along slowly and health permitting hopefully it goes well for her she can be just another South Carolina player drafted into the WNBA As I said, it's always good to keep an eye on the enemy. I say that tongue-in-cheek. But if South Carolina fan wants to look at the big that UConn has in the pipeline, it's Gandy Malou Mamel. She is originally from Ireland, and I asked the question, is she the next Takeem Olajuwon or Tito Horford Sr.? By the way, the picture I know, I use Tito Horford Jr. My bad. All right, thanks a lot for watching. Good night.